right, thanks everyone for joining us on episode number 76 of Lunch Out Loud Ottawa. My name is Nick Matuski. And I'm Andrew Miller. And of course, we are the podcast that talks to the people, places, events, and music that make this city the incredible city that it is. We're very pleased to be in the bioluminescence, bioluminescence <laughs> room in the dark for this interview, so it's a little it's different for cool. us. Pretty cool. Some uh, transcendent sounds overhead that you'll be hearing in the background. But before we get to our special guest, John Swettenham, why don't we check this out? So that song was Moon Song, and it's off of their upcoming EP that will be released on June 21st. It's going to be at St. Luke's Anglican Church in Chinatown. Doors are open at 7.30. Show starts at 8 p.m. Tickets are only $10 and can be purchased at the door or in advance at the Ottawa Folklore Center and at Vertical Records. Opening for the show will be Ottawa's local folk artist, Justice RF, who is, has been on our show and is awesome. Don't miss, miss this fantastic event, and be sure to get tickets in advance. For more information about the Musettes, visit their website at www.musettes.com or find them on Facebook. And I just want to add, I saw them a couple months ago at Zaphod's, and their intro is something that will catch everybody's ear. So yeah. they're, they're a very good uh, all-female band, so much talent, so we hope you check them out. So, we are live today from the Museum of Nature. Uh, I'm sure many of you have been here before, either as a school group back in the, when you're growing up, or recently with the addition of Nature Nocturne, which we'll talk about later, which has been a, a wildly successful event. I only say that because the last Nature Nocturne, which was the last one of this kind of summer season, uh, sold out uh, almost a week and a half in advance. Oh wow! And people were clamoring for tickets. Uh, that was, uh, all was that last weekend? That was a couple weekends ago. Yeah. yeah. So and it, and it had the theme of bioluminescence. Yeah. So we'll talk about that very shortly. So we're pleased to be with John Swettenham, who is now the acting VP of Experience Engagement at uh, the Museum of Nature. But uh, he will step back into his role of marketing and media. Uh, in the fall, so thank you so much for having us, John. Well, thank you for having me, and I'm glad you're here. Yeah, this is uh, this is actually your first time, eh, Andrew? It is. This is. Uh, I, I was embarrassed to say, for somebody that loves nature as much as I do, and I love being outside, I've actually never been to the Museum of Nature. But so, I, now I am. <laughs> but I, I think that's possibly why you're why you're having a child, so you can experience with a childlike that's, vision. That's uh, just in the it. future, right? We'll be able to look at it anew together. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, and we look forward to welcoming your. Uh, your uh, future child. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so tell us a bit about yourself. Um, growing up here, you were mentioning earlier to us that uh, you are born and uh, raised in Ottawa? Yeah, I'm an Ottawa boy. Uh, and so you don't, you don't always run into Ottawa boys in Ottawa. No, but, that's uh, true. Yeah, no, I'm an Ottawa boy still here. Grew up in the Glebe. Uh, and uh, actually just moved my mom out of her house in Sandy Hill. She's been there for 34 years. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, and she just moved into an apartment. So, uh, yeah, that's something else. Now, did you did you also uh, did you go to school here? Or did you ever leave Ottawa at any time, or have you been uh, yeah, I went much to much time? more public school, and uh, I went to Lisgar High School, Lisgar Collegiate. All right, on yeah. So uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm an Ottawa guy. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and what brought you back to Ottawa from living in Montreal and Toronto? Oh well, I worked uh, for Pure Later Courier in okay. Toronto, and uh, and Canada Post bought Pure Later, and in the process, I guess bought me. So I, I was the first uh, internal transfer from Pure Later to Canada Post, and I worked in marketing. I ended up leading marketing at Canada Post until uh, until I came here to the museum a year ago. Wow. 
And uh, and how how have you seen things change uh, throughout the years in Ottawa? How are you liking the changes that are that are happening now? Oh, it's great. I mean, it you know it's uh, become a lot more urban. There's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's kind of weird when you've grown up here because it all happened so gradually, incrementally. Sometimes you don't notice. Yeah. Uh, but I was jogging through downtown. Uh, I guess it was Saturday morning. And through the market and just thought, wow, you know, it kind of feels like a big city here. Yeah, it's yeah. starting to get there. For yeah, sure. a lot of people downtown in the market. It was a beautiful Saturday. Yeah, it was a beautiful Saturday. There were tons of people and it just had a good vibe going on. I love that. Love yeah. that vibe. Any yeah. uh, special yeah. restaurants or I know you have young children, so where do they like to... Or do you like to take them? Interesting spots. Well, you know, the great thing about working at the uh, at the Canadian Museum of Nature is we're really close to Colonnade Pizza. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely some of the best I, pizza in the city. Yeah, that's great. that's a great place, and my kids love it. It's really good, and it's always packed. It yeah. is. I see people there every single hour yeah. of the day. Yeah, yeah. I find a lot of the, there's a, some really good uh, kind of local places down yeah. by the by the museum. Uh, like Al's Steakhouse, if you want the best local steak, you know, yeah. Al's is the place to go, and Colonnade Pizza that whole part of Elgin Street. So I think part of our museum experience kind of floods out, if you will, uh, into the Elgin Street neighborhood. Yeah. Not currently any food trucks right close nearby, is there? No, I haven't seen them down Not here. Not yet, eh? Yeah. I wonder if that might be coming in the near, not so distant future then. That wouldn't uh, be too bad an idea either. Then you wouldn't have to walk too far. Well, you can always have brunch. You always have brunch here at the museum on Sundays. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. we have brunch yeah. here as well. Yeah, we offer brunch on Sunday on Sunday That's mornings new. here at the museum. That's yeah, new. Yeah, it is new. We're trying it out this summer. It's really great food, and it's in our uh, our the Queen's Lantern, which is our gorgeous big glass tower in the front of the museum. Is that on the wow. second or third floor? I remember uh, I was here a, f- a few weeks ago, and you had a dinner there, so people can have private. Yeah, parties so it's there. the second floor. Second is the, floor is okay. the main base. There's a, there's a mezzanine a little higher up on three, also in there. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. what's the cost for the brunch on Sundays? Oh my goodness, ask me the tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think with admission to the museum, it's about $20. There's two different two different offers. Oh, that's good. Uh, so there's a smaller breakfast, uh, which starts at 9. Then you can get kind of a, a bigger full-on brunch, uh, which starts at, I think, 11. If I remember, I should know these times. Yeah. Maybe, it's, maybe it's 1030. I think it's 11. Um, and, uh, and so there's two different price points on that. But uh, it's pretty reasonably priced, considering that admission to the museum is included when you when you buy that, that. Yeah, that's it. That's a yeah. great idea. I mean, uh, you know, you can come yeah. in, and have your breakfast, and then walk it off through the museum. It's, <laughs> it's a great yeah, idea. And it's, yeah. just, and it's just a really great space. Like, it's an awesome space to be in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So what led you from Canada Post into the museum? Uh, well, into to the, the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's a complete... <laughs> yeah, that's a... It's a different turn. I mean, I guess marketing is marketing. Yeah, I think, uh, I think marketing, look it, I, I look at marketing as sort of a, it's a customer-focused process. You really have to, you know, really try to understand what, uh, you know, what customer needs you're addressing, what you're, in, in this case, the museum visitor needs you're addressing. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole kind of uh, process and methodology behind that. Um, and so to be quite honest, um, I mean, I left Canada Post because I guess we decided to part ways. Uh, they want to try some new blood. Um, and so I wanted to stay in Ottawa and, uh, and uh, you know, I, I really hit it off with the team here, and so I'm really happy that they decided to bring me on. About how many uh, employees are working here at a, at a time? At the overall, in the museum overall? Yeah. It's about 120, I think it's 120 to 130. Oh, wow. Now we have a, I mean, in addition to the museum, um, we have a, a huge research and collections function. So over in Gatineau at the, uh, at the Natural Heritage Campus, um, we've got a facility that's about five hockey arenas in size. Oh, wow. And uh, the National Natural History Collection is kept there, and that's like 10.5 million specimens. Um, so you see, like, our kind of... is that So this is like a massive Noah's Ark. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's everything from fossils, you know, the dinosaur bones, uh, to uh, the mammals that you see, plants. Um, I like to say, you know, things in jars, invertebrates in jars. So, wow. uh, you know, um, sea life, diatoms, beetles, bugs. Is that ever open to the public? Yeah, it is. We have an open house uh, in the fall, okay. um, in October, uh, mid-October. Um, and so we open the doors for a day, a Saturday. Uh, wow. And we'll have about probably 4,000 people come and visit on that day. That's really cool. Yeah, that's, is there a yeah. lot of things that people would have never seen or even heard of before type well of i think so and just the scale i mean yeah. you know you can imagine like you know walking into a room and just seeing like you know tons oh well, i shouldn't say tons but i mean yeah yeah literally i mean i mean just tons of fossils or uh you know a, a different plants um you name it i mean drawers of beetles that are all i mean they're they're all um they're all really laid out so they're, so they're preserved and displayed and documented. That's really neat. Hey, yeah. you, mentioned, you mentioned it's also a research center. Are we still discovering 
many new species out there? Oh, sure. Yeah, one of the museum's uh, center, uh, centers of excellence is species discovery. Yeah. Um, and so we have uh, researchers that are out there now exploring. Um, we recently discovered, like, uh, would have been, uh, was it last year? It would have been last year. So in, in 2013, we announced uh, uh, the discovery of an Arctic camel. Uh, so wow. one of our researchers discovered uh, the uh, fossil evidence, or bone evidence, I should say, bone yeah. fragment evidence of a, of a, of a camel on Ellesmere Island. Um, and uh, we also discovered, maybe in 2010, I think, we announced the discovery of Puya, which is the name of a walking seal. So this is a missing link. Like this is a oh, crazy uh, yeah. So we're discovering stuff all the time. Now, yeah. when you discover these, uh, is there a big party at the museum? Do all the employees get together? And go, <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, we got another one. We got one. <laughs> and that's everybody, a, and that's we, a good idea. We should probably introduce that because <laughs> that's what I would envision. Because I think that'd be really cool to bring the t team together to introduce the new. Uh, you know, I would bring yeah. it. If it, 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 we probably should think of that. The, the probably part of the reason why it hasn't happened is it's it's a it's a process, right? Yeah. From, from the discovery, uh, well, you, you keep people in there, and then you point it out so they get pumped up. Uh, yeah, it has to kind of lead to, um, you know, they'll, they'll publish a paper, and it has to go through a whole scientific process where other scientists have looked at it and vetted it. Like, it doesn't become yeah. an official discovery, uh, maybe, you know, a number of years after I the, suppose it's got to take a lot of work. Yeah. To so to it's, so make sure it's not a, a you know... A just a different form of something that already exists. Yeah, I think it takes a couple of years from the discovery yeah. until the whole thing is actually sort of announced. And, 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 and wow, yeah. that's really cool. So I guess you could go six years ago. We discovered <laughs> yeah. an Arctic uh, Arctic camel. Well, that's going to be interesting. How um, how frequently are exhibits replaced? Like not the not the main one, like the uh, the frogs or the bioluminescence, but say uh, different artifacts within the museum. Like when's that beetle that's in the drawer in Gadano? Want to get his time to shine uh, in at the Museum of Nature? Um, well, it's a good question. The uh, the museum's galleries are sort of under a process of continuous improvement, um, so we're always looking at ways to kind of improve and change things. So, for instance, in our mammal gallery right now, we're looking at enhancing uh, pieces and parts of it. Uh, that could include bringing in some new specimens. Uh, for instance, Puya, the the missing link. Um, is on display, um, and so that that would have been a specimen that was introduced uh, into the gallery. That's um, cool. Yeah. Otherwise, the gallery goes through, as I was saying, a kind of a process of continuous improvement, and then every now and again we'll launch a new gallery or a sort of an overhaul. So, for instance, in 2017, um, we will be introducing a new gallery, which is about the Arctic. It'll be our Arctic gallery. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, again, our Arctic research is a center of excellence for us. So, it's species discovery and, and really Arctic research. Um, and so we'll have an Arctic gallery opening in 2017 to tie in with the uh, sesquicentennial, the 150th of Canada. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, there's got to be a lot that's undiscovered up there, right? That's so frozen and ice. And I wonder, if, if with things thawing more up uh, in the north, is that helping at all with anything? Uh, uh, well, um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that can be called helping. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, environmentally, uh, there's a lot of concern about mm -hmm. environmental change. And in fact, our research collection plays a pretty instrumental role um, in sort of measuring the, uh, the, I guess, the effects of change yeah. on biodiversity. Um, and and we, we, our collection really stands as kind of the reference point okay. of what biodiversity is up there and when, where and when. Uh, so when change happens, it's, it, it, again, it can, becomes kind of the ruler or the benchmark where you can kind of measure what's going on. Gotcha. So it's, it's very important for environmental stewardship uh, so uh, we see an increasingly important role for our research and collections um, in, in the context of, of global warming and the Arctic. Gotcha. Uh, if it's going to be managed, you need to measure it to manage it, Absolutely. and, and we're, we're kind of the measurement stick. Okay. I've had many debates with people about uh, the effects of global warming. <laughs> Online you can debate with people about anything, of course. <laughs> yeah, well certainly our researchers when they come back say they're seeing it. Like yeah. there's, there's no doubt they're seeing uh, you're seeing things change rapidly in the Arctic. Wow. Absolutely. And, and can you tell us, uh, how is the bioluminescence, the new exhibit, at the, where we are currently located, how uh, have the reviews been? Well, the reviews have been pretty good, actually. Um, it's, so far, we've been getting a lot of favorable feedback. Uh, this show was developed by, in partnership, we, in collaboration, I should say, uh, with the American Museum of Natural History in New York uh, and the Field Museum in Chicago. Um, so, uh, you know, we're really proud uh, to be working with that kind of caliber of mm -hmm. museum. 
Um, and so it's already been in New York, uh, and it's already been in Chicago. It left Chicago uh, just at the beginning of the year, closed just in the beginning of the, of the new year. Uh, and it got extended in Chicago because it was so popular. Um, and we're seeing that uh, so far we've had really good attendance. Um, and you know the number of people that come to the museum that choose to come to this exhibit has been quite high. Uh, so generally very good feedback. Um, you know, the, the thing, I mean, right now, if you hear the music in the background, yeah. we, are, we are currently out on a summer's night, surrounded by fireflies. Yeah. Um, but they're not real fireflies, because you can't <laughs> actually have real fireflies in, in, the, you know, in the museum. Yeah. Um, but, the, um, you know, the, what you're seeing around us um, are models, uh, you know, scientific models. Um, and large, as you can see, the size of that firefly over there is huge. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, uh, and, and so that, that, that is exactly what a firefly would look like, yeah. only many, many, many times its actual size. Uh, so that allows you to see it close up and kind of engage with it. So the, the, only, the only comments we've had sometimes are a little bit, well, gee, I didn't expect that. Some people say, well, I kind of thought they were going to be, you know, real fireflies or real animals. There are some real animals. We have our flashlight fish. How are we the have flashlight fish? Are they're they still alive? They're doing well, thank you. They're still alive. Yeah, they're still alive. I they're was worried okay. about them. I was worried about them on yeah. the first night because uh, you were telling us that if you take a flash photography, they'll die. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, we have flashlight fish here on display in the aquarium. Uh, the flashlight fish are actually fished in Japan, in the Sea of Japan. Um, and they need to fish them. It's a cool story. They need to fish them um, on the new moon, which is the night when there is no moon, yeah. uh, because then there's, the there's kind of a congregation and density. They, they, they kind of group together uh, when there's no moon in the sky. Oh, okay. which makes them, that moon. Yeah, it makes them easier to yeah. fish. So the divers go down and get them, and then they, they come over uh, by air, and then we need to acclimatize them and keep them. But they're very sensitive to light. Wow. Um, because they, I mean, obviously they may create their own light. Uh, they're used to being in the dark. And, and if there's a big flash, uh, it, it shocks them um, oh, wow. and will actually uh, harm them or kill them. Uh, so luckily, our visitors have been very conscious of our big signs yeah. uh, that say, please do not flash the flashlight fish. Yeah. And they're doing okay. They're flashing away. So what, what, what are some of the other exhibits that are, um, like, that are a staple that are here all the time throughout the museum? I mean, it's a huge place. What are, what are some other things that people can expect to see when they uh, come visit the Museum of Nature? Um, well, I, I guess I'll probably start with our fossil gallery, our Talisman Energy Fossil Gallery. Um, that, that is the uh, original um, uh, dinosaur uh, or fossil display okay. or gallery in Canada. Uh, so we were the first. Oh, wow. Um, and we have uh, actually Edmontosaurus, who's a big oh. dinosaur on display down there. Um, uh, he just celebrated his 100th uh, anniversary of being on display this oh. last year. Oh, so he is, he's 65 million <laughs> and 100 years old. Uh, That's something. Yeah. So, I mean, the, it's, it's pretty impressive. And I guess one of our claims to fame for our fossil gallery is we have the largest percentage of real fossils on display. Oh, really? Yeah. In the world or in Canada? In Canada. In Canada. In Canada. So, wow. um, you know, a lot of fossil displays, and you need to do it. I mean, in, in some cases, you've got to make casts of yeah. some of the bones. You might be but, but we have the largest well. percentage. It's, it's over 80% real fossils wow. on display. So we're pretty proud of that. And, uh, yeah. Uh, we've also got our mammal gallery, uh, okay. which is kind of well-known for its dioramas. If you think of the days before there were TV, yeah. and where would people see uh, you know, a wild animal in its natural habitat? And that's what dioramas really did. It gave you know, people, you could come right in and see it in 3D. Yeah. Um, and we, we have those, we're very proud of them. Um, the, uh, uh, there's a lot of artistry, uh, famous artists painted the dioramas. And the animals, of course, are fantastic. You can see all of Canada's, I say, the, the iconic animals of Canada. Yeah. So whether it's a moose or a grizzly bear or a beaver or a bison, polar bear, uh, they're all here. And I think that's a particular interest to tourists to Canada because they really associate nature and wildlife with Canada. Yeah, for sure. And to be honest, if you're touring Canada, I mean, you may run into a grizzly bear. Yeah, uh, but things are possible. But. <laughs> but chances are you may not. So yeah. it, it's pretty cool, I think, for for uh, folks to come and see them here. Um, and then we've got our uh, our uh, RBC Blue Water Gallery, uh, which actually has um, the skeleton of a of a great blue whale. Like there's oh a, wow! There's a there's a big whale. I right have not seen that one yet. No. Oh, oh, it's super cool. We have got to go up and see yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's really neat and. Uh, so, I mean, if you ever think of uh, Pinocchio and Geppetto, where he kind of goes, you know, Pinocchio, we're in the belly of a great yeah. blue whale. 
I mean, you can do it here. You can get right up there, and you're in the belly of a great Oh, that's hill. awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then we have, of course, our uh, we have our Earth Gallery, our Vale Earth Gallery, um, and it's it's got you know really cool meteorites. You can see meteorites. You can see metals. You can see gems. You can see how gems you know um, uh, transform into jewels. Uh, you can see how rocks are constructed. We have a cave you can go into and sort of see how wow. stalactites and stalagmites are formed. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of neat places to go. Lastly, is our bird gallery, yeah. um, and we've got the largest collection of Canadian birds on display. Um, and I just think the bird gallery is really cool. You just kind of see all these birds, and you can interact with bird calls and all that sort of stuff. Oh, we're going to have a thing. we're going to have a special cool. exhibit um, opening in July uh, uh, regarding the uh, passenger pigeon um, because the, oh, wow. it's a hundred years since the extinction of the passenger pigeon as a species. Really, the one that would bring the little notes? Uh, apparently, yeah. Although there's a carrier pigeon and a passenger pigeon. Oh, yeah, this yeah. Is, you can still train one. Mike Tyson yeah. trains them. Yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah. It's, it's a really, really good-looking bird. Good mortgages. <laughs> um, and we have some specimens of of the passenger pigeon, um, and so we'll have a display which is very much about. Um, well, it's really about extinction, and 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 it questions some stuff about de-extinction. Um, we had uh, one of our researchers do uh, a, a talk as part of our Nature Talk series earlier this year about de-extinction, where you bring an extinct species back to life. Wow! Oh, wow! Um, and there's a <laughs> there are scientists who are seriously talking about doing that uh, with the passenger pigeon, and the question is, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and there's a huge kind of ethical and question about that yeah. and so we kind of wanted to explore that a bit most people that follow the theory of evolution i guess would say yeah probably shouldn't bring something yeah back and there's that's already more, gone and right? there's more species that are that are becoming extinct now this than probably ever yeah. on earth and and you know close to home is the brown bat um which is suffering from the uh, the, the fungus that kind of uh, I say nose fungus. I probably have it wrong. Yeah. Our scientists are probably hearing me speak now. Yeah. Like, that marketing guy, he doesn't really say that. <laughs> but, uh, Some sort of science problem. But, yeah, I know. But there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a viral fungus that is um, uh, uh, really impacting the bat population in North America. And if things don't change, um, it's on the course for extinction. Wow. So that's another part of our of our exhibit is to kind of, of talk about that. a lot of reptiles over the last little while have been uh, going extinct. Too. Yeah, and we Tons had of different uh, kinds. Of and animals. we had frogs. We had our, our frog display here recently. It yeah. just left us here over the winter. And uh, again, they're also very vulnerable species. Wow. Yeah. Well, we got to protect them. Yeah. But uh, let's the, take a quick break. Yeah. Do we, yeah, we'll take a quick break. Yeah, Thursday nights are still free to come on down to the museum. Yes. Yeah. Five to eight p.m. Yeah. Wonderful. That's a great price. All right, so we'll take a quick <laughs> quick break, and we'll be right back with John to talk about Nature Nocturne and possible more events coming up at the museum. We're going to listen to one more song from the Musettes, and Don Chow will be telling us about flux that will be uh, happening on June 16th in, uh, at Mariposa Farm. So we'll be right back. Thanks, Nick. For this edition of our segment, we're going to talk about Flux. It's a great event. It's organized and founded by Danny Mongeau. Of, uh, he's a chef at Hoot Bourbon Bar on Rideau Street. If you haven't been to Hoot, you really should. Um, this is a very creative chef who's doing his own take on southern comfort, on food from the bayou. It's uh, it, it, it's really it's really an interesting menu. It's got great craft co craft cocktails there. Thing about Danny Mojo is this: he's very, very community driven. So he got a bunch of chefs from the city, the up and coming chefs that are expected to do very great things. He got Kyle Prue from 
Wow, he's former former chef at Zen, two years at Zen, and he might be again um, if the if, if Zen reopens. Um, he's got Raz Poisson from uh, Navarra. He's got Stephen LaSalle from uh, the Albion Rooms, and he's got Ian Reed from the Courtyard Restaurant. These are all very young chefs, and they're they're very passionate about their craft. They're getting together and coming up with some very creative plates. For um, for Danny, what he wants to do is create a series of events called Flux, and the idea is to uh, stoke the, the the interest in, uh, in, in contributing to the community. So the event, it, the process from the event are going to Shepherds of Good Hope, but along with your ticket is a pledge to provide two hours of volunteer work to the Shepherds of Good Hope. You can volunteer at the soup kitchen. There's, there's, there's. Uh, you can volunteer um, of the grocery program. You can volunteer at one of their eight shelters. If you didn't know, the Shepherds Good Hope is a great organization, and it takes care of a lot of homeless and vulnerable people. And it can always, and all, they always need a hand. So, um, what what the event is? It's 175 bucks a person, which seems a lot until you think about it this way. There's 16 courses. The courses are wine paired. There'll be a shuttle uh, coming from Ottawa to, um, to to the venue, taking you from Ottawa to the venue. So you can enjoy your wine pair courses. There's twenty five dollar tax receipt, and a bunch of chefs are participating. Danny himself is going to be um, he 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 hinted at a couple of the courses he'll be providing. He's going to be doing uh, he's going to be doing edible cocktails. So the ones that 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 he uh, did a tasting for as a preview were dirty martini and mojito soup. Uh, he did this uh, one bite, se- se- well, it's about two bite Caesar. Um, my favorite of that tasting was his rum and coke, uh, edible rum and coke. Coke, it's pork belly braised in rum and coke flavor. So you got a mirepoix, cinnamon, vanilla, great stuff. It's served with a sweet potato puree, so ethereal. Um, and is it? And there's a carbonated burn, lot burnt. Uh, live gel, which gives a little bit of acidity. Uh, he served it about Maple Manhattan, and he served what uh, one of the one of my favorite dishes that he's ever that's, that the Hooch has ever produced, and he produced it for Cobra. Uh, so, if you don't know about the Cobra Underground Dinner and you didn't attend, you didn't get to try this dish at uh, that, that the Danny and Adam Badman came up came up with. Adam being the pastry chef. He put together this uh, this take of a gin fizz. Um, there's a sphere, there's a meringue, there's a vanilla sponge, and there's a blood orange. Uh, there's blood orange flavor in here as well. And this uh, this dish, um, Danny says, tastes like a creamsicle, which I love. Anyways, that said, uh, Stephen LaSalle is going to be there, and Kyle Pru is going to be there. Both of them uh, are, are expected to do great things. They're invited to gold, to gold medal plates this year. Um, Stephen's going to do. He, Stephen's making his own vodka, his own gin. He's taking Dylan's vodka and he's he's infusing juniper, and he's going to be serving a lemon seed tart. Ian Reed promised something also with juniper, but he didn't tell me quite what yet. Um, anyways, it's a great event. You're, you're going to be eating lots, drinking great wine, uh, and it's for a great cause. Anyways, if you want to go get tickets, it's on the Shepherd's Good Hope web- website. I'm out. I'll talk to you next week. All right. Thank you so much, Don and Musettes, for the song uh, Kill Manham Lullaby. Or, yeah, Kill Manham Lullaby. It's a very nice song, very beautiful. So, Nature Nocturne, uh, when did that idea come about? And, uh, was it seen as successful? Because I know it changed around the museum more than they've ever seen before. I know with 2,500 or whatever number of people coming in and having kind of a, a party and with different all kinds of different events. So, Well, yeah, first off, i got to say we're, uh, we're thrilled about Nature Nocturne, and it has really taken off. It is very successful, mm-hmm. um, so much so that actually, you know, we're we're sorry that everybody that wants to come can't come because we do have to limit attendance. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, the last time we had 2,300 people come, and it was just a great feeling, a great vibe. Uh, it feels busy. It doesn't feel overwhelming. Um, there's dancing in our Queen's Lantern, uh, which is such a cool space to be in. And just the way the museum is designed with the atrium and the balconies and everything that's going on. Um, we keep the galleries open. Uh, we'll tend to have other uh, events and programming events um, and other musical events. 
or cultural events in different parts of the museum. The whole museum's open. Oh wow! Um, and uh, so that, that whole museum is accessible. When yeah, you the whole museum's open. Yeah, yeah, you just can't yeah. bring your drinks into the exhibits. Yeah, gotcha, you but, can't bring your drinks into into the into the main gallery. Gotcha. But there there is a bar that's open. Oh, there's eleven bars. <laughs> eleven bars. <laughs> eleven bars and poutine at night. For yeah. Food after. Oh, there's great wow. food. There's great action. Um, there's the, the there's like our our DJ, um, yeah. a, a T dot who's set up in uh, in the lantern. But then there'll be other music in other parts. It tends to be we usually have a live music. Uh, in the fall, we had I just loved it. We had a, we had a jazz trio playing in our dinosaur forest, and it was just so awesome. That's so cool. Uh, but for people that are sick of the club scene, I mean, and just uh, such a good alternative to well, come out and have a good night. And it's a different you know? venue, you know. People dress up Definitely. for it. Like, yeah. they look good. And uh, you know, we our atrium wall, which always has a projection on it, which yeah. is usually about what's going on in the museum and stuff. But on at Nature Nocturne, that's a that's a that's like a Twitter wall. Oh yeah, and we have Sherry Pick, and like people are doing selfies, and they're popping them up there. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, and people are just looking good and having fun. It's a really great night. What, what awesome. was it like when uh, the idea was? Were you there when the idea was first no, presented I, I to the board? No, I wasn't actually. Came, I think yeah. I met you at when uh, when you first came at one of the. It wasn't the initial one. It was about five or six in maybe, but. Uh, what is like the board of directors? What do they say about it? Are they because it's something totally new? It's been done at the ROM in uh, Toronto, as well as other museums around the world. So, uh, well, I think you know it, it has been done in other museums around the world. Um, you know, uh, so the Museum of Natural History in London, England, uh, the American Museum of Natural History in New York, uh, the ROM in Toronto. Um, you know, and we, I think we, kind of, I wasn't there, but but we kind of looked at what's going on in other museums and thought, well, that looks really cool. Uh, that's a great idea. Let's try something like that. Um, what we wanted to do was make it specific to Ottawa, mm -hmm. and you'll notice that we really engage the Ottawa community in Nature Nocturne. So, you know, for instance, for Lunar New Year, for Chinese New Year, you know, we were really tight um, with the Chinatown uh, Business Association, okay. um, and we brought in a lot of local cultural events to kind of, which really worked great, and we do that every time. Yeah. Um, but you know, the real question, I think, the you know, the the question around success for Nature Nocturne was, gee, is Ottawa to your question earlier when we first started, you yeah. know, what's changed in Ottawa? Is Ottawa big enough and urban enough to support it? Will it get behind it? Yeah. And and it will it kind of find it cool and hip? And I mean the answer to that is a resounding yes. Yeah. Because you know we sell out every we time. sell out every time and it just feels so hip and urban and cool. Uh, so you know we're really proud of it as a as a national museum. Yeah. yeah. Um, to see that, you know, we're in a city that is, you know, we would feel international first rank. Uh, yeah. Just like our museum is, it's, it's very symbi symbiotic. Yeah, that's awesome. Creating something where people from Montreal or Toronto would come up to Ottawa for, and that's yeah. a, a we'll trend on Twitter, and not just locally. We'll we'll trend on Twitter nationally. Yeah. every single doctor. So, oh, wow. so people in Vancouver or something, if they're checking out Twitter, seeing what's going on, yeah. they're going to be like, "Oh wow, well something Nocturne, cool is happening in Ottawa." Well, that's it. I'm yeah. Dancing you know, with the dinosaurs. It's, you know? it's putting <laughs> us right. It's putting us right on the map. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, so you're taking the do you take the summer off of Nature Nocturne and come back in the fall? In uh, the, the well, <laughs> trick question. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned. Okay. Um, last year uh, we managed to partner for a special nocturne with um, with the Museum of Science and Technology around Star Wars because they had that yes. that really oh, cool, cool Star Wars exhibit. Yeah. And so we said, hey, come on, we can do a really cool Star Wars themed, uh, you know, Star Wars identities themed Nature Nocturne, yeah. which we did, and it was such a hit. Did yeah. many people dress up in like Star well, Wars we had, get ups or uh, We had Chewbacca and uh, <laughs> all right on. and uh, all you know, we um, it's the Gee, I want to say it's a Legion Fifty One. It's a different name, but there's a, a group. oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know. Where yeah, there's a there's a group in Ottawa that is yeah. kind of. I think it's, it is Legion Fifty One. Yeah, it, it's sanctioned by by Lucasfilm, uh, and and they actually represent the characters, and they raise money. It goes to great causes and all that kind of stuff. But they are set up to show up, like as the characters, and I mean ads, like they are exactly the characters. That's cool. And so they were here, I mean Chewbacca was here, he must have been 10 feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And I loved the uh, the one where you had uh, all the local artisans and crafts in the on the fourth floor, I think, on the side. And yeah, the, the makers, room. The, the, the makers themed, yeah, that was really fair, cool. Yeah. yeah, we had the makers fair and we had, the, there were 3D printers and the whole thing was so cool. Ah, I love that. And so. uh, yeah, anyway, stay tuned for the summer. Okay, uh, Because I, I'm not at liberty to say anything just yet. 
Uh, but stay tuned. We're looking at a cool partnership for a cool nocturne. Well, uh, certainly right. let us know so we can uh, <laughs> so we can let all of our listeners know about it. Yeah, perfect. So uh, thank you so much, John, for having us on. Yeah, oh, well, was, thank you so much. Pleasure. Yeah, Nick, Great. Andrew, it's been thank you very much. Oh, and, uh, and, you know, thanks so much for coming to uh, uh, I'm really, Creatures of Light, which I'm, is where we are right now. Yeah. And uh, and for uh, joining me here in the uh, summer 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 forest. Well, and, and I, can, I can guarantee I'll be back. I think that Sunday brunch idea is, uh, is pretty good. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. Great food. And uh, have you ever been to the Fringe Festival? Uh, yes, I have. So we're, yeah. we're, we're talking to uh, Pat, who is the director of the Fringe Festival next week. So we're going to be previewing the Fringe Festival, which is one of my favorite times of the year as well. So well, that's I hope great. you can join in and listen to that. We'll hear some interesting previews of some interesting uh, interesting plays. I'll be tuned in for sure. <laughs> uh, and so we'll, we'll just go over quickly some events this weekend. Uh, of course, it's Doors Open Ottawa weekend, which is one of my favorite weekends of the year, yeah. where you can uh, bike around. It looks like it's going to be beautiful weather. Bike around, uh, tour all, a lot of the embassies which are open. Yeah, that's cool. I, I Everyone like, looks at them and they just think, I wonder what it looks like inside. Well, this is this is the this, weekend that you go and yeah. check them out. So And, and like as opposed to in Toronto or something, we have the embassies in Ottawa. Yeah. So it is a really neat event. I definitely uh, worthwhile to do that. Colorado is playing a show uh, out of a truck at Dalhousie in York as oh, cool. part of like a comeback to your hometown kind of show, so that should be pretty interesting. <laughs> uh, Ming Wu, who is one of our, uh, Ottawa's most notorious photographers, is having an ex- exhibit at the Raw Sugar Cafe tonight, so I wish him oh, all the be best. Uh, tomorrow, you have Winchester Warm is releasing an album at St. Alvin's Church. Yeah. Cloud Munson and uh, Storm Outside is opening for them. And, uh, Right. Saturday, you got Mackenzie Rhythm Section and the Hornets playing yeah. over at Babylon, so that's a really fun Hip-hop show. Hip-hop karaoke as well uh, this weekend? Open, uh, yeah, at Open Air, like uh, at Parliament Pub. Yeah. So, uh, Hip-hop karaoke, that would be great. Anything else, Sam Miller? Uh, I'm just quickly looking through, and it uh, looks to be about it. I'm calling a babysitter so I can go out. There you go. <laughs> there you go. As <laughs> always. I, I hope this weekend can be even close to as good as last weekend. Yeah. I, I did that Ottawa Foodie Challenge, and I have to say, if you love food in the city, that was one of the best events I've been part of. Uh, from 10 to 4 p.m., Wow. Uh, we went so hard, and we almost, we almost won. It was a, But it was a lot of fun for a great day, great cause for the, uh, the food bank. So thank That's you true. very much for joining us, everyone. Remember, yeah, tell your friends. You. Follow us on Facebook, uh, like us on iTunes, tell your family, huddle we have, around we me. We have one more song from the Musettes. Absolutely. absolutely. Sweet. It's uh, Wonderlust. I love this tune from the Musettes. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye. The sun rose this morning in my hometown. It put on a brilliant show But now evening has come to the place I am from I have got to go Oh, I have got to go So I packed up my bags and I headed east I crossed Yeah.